Snowsight is great for browser-based work, but there might be times where you need to connect to Snowflake from outside the web browser, which is why today I'm going to cover how to connect to Snowflake using Snowflake CLI, Snowflake's official command line tool. Hey everyone, Gilberto from Snowflake here. So first things first, Snowflake CLI is not the same thing as SnowSQL. SnowSQL is an older CLI client from Snowflake, which allowed you to execute SQL and other DDL and DML operations directly from your terminal. But that was about it. Snowflake CLI is the latest official command line tool developed by Snowflake. It allows you to interact with your Snowflake account directly from your terminal. And it's been explicitly designed to enable even more workloads, in addition to being able to execute SQL operations. So yes, you can use it to run SQL and manage database objects, but you can also use it to work with features like Streamlit and Snowflake, Snowflake Notebooks, Snowflake Cortex, and much more. And just a heads up, if you're currently using SnowSQL, check out the docs for it. Here you'll see that Snowflake actually recommends that you begin transitioning from SnowSQL to Snowflake CLI. Now, you're probably wondering, why would I want to connect to Snowflake from a command line interface rather than a web browser? Well, there are several reasons. First, automation. With a CLI, you can script repetitive tasks and integrate them into your CI CD pipelines. Second, development workflows. Many developers prefer working mostly in their terminal or IDE. Third, executing bulk operations, things like uploading files, running multiple SQL scripts, managing database objects. All of this can be made faster from the command line. And fourth, remote connection and execution. This means being able to connect to Snowflake from servers, containers, or any other computing environment where a web browser isn't practical. So let me show you how to connect to your account using Snowflake CLI. I won't be doing a full installation walkthrough in this video, but you should know that you can install Snowflake CLI using pip. The command to do this would be pip install snowflake-cli. I'll type this into my terminal and run it, but as you can see, this message requirement already satisfied means it's already installed. If it's been properly installed, you should be able to run this command to verify snow-version which should give you some output like this if it's been installed correctly. When you install Snowflake CLI, a directory called .snowflake, the dot indicating a hidden directory, is installed in your user's home directory. And in this folder is a file called config.toml. This is the file that you can open and use to configure connections to Snowflake. So let me show you how to do this. I'm in VS Code and have the handy code terminal shortcut configured. So I can simply type code and then the full path to the file, which would be tilde slash dot snowflake slash config dot toml. This will open the file within VS Code. Let's now configure the connection to my Snowflake account. The first thing I'll do is name my connection, which I can do by typing connections dot get started with Snowflake CLI. Next, I'll set my account identifier, user, and password. I'll start by typing account equals, user equals, and password equals. The account identifier represents the Snowflake account I want to connect to, and the user and password are the credentials that I use to log into that account. So let me show you where to grab your account identifier. I'm already logged into the account I want to connect to. At the bottom, I'll click on my name, then I'll click on connect a tool to Snowflake. This will open a modal with a bunch of information on my account, including my account identifier, which is listed on this row here. Hovering over this information icon confirms that this is what I should use to connect to Snowflake from various tools. And you'll know you're copying the correct one if you copy the one with the hyphen in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to copy it to my clipboard and now I'll head back over to my config.toml file. I'll paste in the account identifier here. And now I'll specify my username and password. Okay, so this is all that you need to authenticate to your account. But if we leave our connection definition with just this information, we'll need to specify our context every single time we want to run a command from the terminal, meaning we'll need to continuously specify our role, our warehouse, our database, and our schema. And depending on what you're trying to do, this can get cumbersome really quickly. So instead, let's add some more information to our connection definition just to help us move a little bit faster. I'm going to add two more pieces of information. 
I'll add role and warehouse. The role is needed so that my commands can execute with the right permissions. And the warehouse is generally needed to perform operations. I could also add database and schema, but I'm actually going to leave those empty and here's why. Remember, you can always set your database and schema in your connection. This is handy if your connection is going to work against the same database and schema over and over again. I prefer a little more flexibility when working in my terminal, so I'm not going to set the database and schema for this specific connection. Instead, I'll specify that information in the terminal when I want to run a command. Now, this is optional. If you'd like to set it in your connection, you can, but if you don't, just know that you'll need to specify the additional information when you want to run a command from the terminal. Okay, before I save my file, I want to set this connection as my default connection. So at the very top of the file, I'll type default connection name equals get started with Snowflake CLI. Now by doing this, I'm stating that by default, I'd like to run any and all subsequent CLI commands using this connection. Now you can easily override this either in the file or in the terminal in cases where you want to use a different connection. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save my config.toml file. And the important thing now is to test my connection to make sure it's configured properly. In the terminal, I'll type snow connection test. Notice that I'm not specifying a connection name, which means I want the CLI to just use the default connection we just set. So I'll run this command, and if all is configured properly, then you should see a message just like this. Okay, great. Now let's run a command. If you're coming from Snow SQL, you're probably interested in how to execute SQL. So I'll start with an example on that. I'll create a database that we can use later. I'll type snow SQL dash Q create database streamlit db. And here are the results. So that was easy enough. But now let me show you how to do something pretty neat, like deploy a streamlit in Snowflake app. So first I'll type snow init Gilberto underscore streamlit underscore app dash dash template example streamlit. This is going to create an app folder called Gilberto Streamlit app using the template called example streamlit, which is one of many available on GitHub. Now, when I run this command, you can see that I'm prompted to enter more info about the app. So I'll enter a name here and I'll call it Gilberto app. I don't have a stage predefined, so I'll just hit enter and let Snowflake CLI and Snowflake create one for me. And finally, I'm going to specify compute underscore warehouse for the compute resource to use when the app executes SQL query. So I'll type compute underscore WH. On the right, you'll see a folder created. So I'll cd into it from the terminal. And if I click on this file called streamlitapp.py, you'll see a very basic Streamlit app. Now I'm going to deploy it to my account using Snowflake CLI. So I'm going to type snow streamlit deploy dash dash database equals streamlit underscore DB. This is the database that we created earlier and make sure you're inside the app folder when you run this command. Remember that I CD'd into it earlier. Now you can see that in just a few seconds, it's been deployed to my Snowflake account and that there's a handy link to access the app. I already have Snow Site open, so I'm just gonna navigate there. I'll click on Projects and then Streamlit. And there it is, I'll open it up. And there's that super simple Streamlit app that we saw in the file. Pretty cool workflow, right? All right, so this only scratches the surface of what you're able to do with Snowflake CLI. In fact, if you type snow dash dash help, you can see all of the different things that you're able to access with Snowflake CLI. My favorite is having Snowflake Cortex AI easily accessible from the command line. Now this means that I can quickly use LLMs directly from the terminal. How cool is that? But there are other cool things that you can do as well, and I encourage you to explore them to learn more. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about Snowflake CLI, here's my favorite page in the docs. 
It's the official Snowflake CLI developer guide. Now, I like it because it has a great overview of Snowflake CLI, but also has a bunch of cool jumping off points based on what you're trying to do. You'll see sections on how to use it for SQL, Snowpark container services, Snowflake native apps, and more. And there's also a handy command reference link to on this page. Now, I've dropped the link to the page in the description, so be sure to check it out. And now for my favorite Snowflake builder resource. It's this amazing video from my colleague Kamesh Sampath on how to boost your productivity in Snowflake CLI by using Snowflake CLI for automation. My favorite part is that Kamesh even covers the Snowflake CLI GitHub action and demonstrates how to integrate Snowflake CLI in your CI CD workflows for your data pipelines. The link to the video is in the description and thank you Kamesh for that great video. All right, so to recap, Snowflake CLI is not the same thing as SnowSQL. It's the latest and greatest official CLI from Snowflake that allows you to do so much more than just run SQL from the command line, like working with Snowpark projects, managing Snowpark container services, and much more. And remember that if you're currently using SnowSQL, Snowflake recommends that you begin transitioning to Snowflake CLI. Try it out and let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to learn how you're using it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.